So I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, start this uh, takeoff here. Get the recording. Uh, Dave, it looks like you still have the host. Looks like you took it back when you signed in. Oh, sorry about that. I'm re I'm recording. Do you need? Right. You want me to? I'll transfer it over to you. No, that's great. Bo, welcome everybody. Super excited here for this short period of time. We have about uh, 20 so minutes together, a uh, little, little, little bit more than that. And so I'm really excited to bring us together to have this conversation, uh, really talking about the influence that uh, digital creators have on adolescents' mental health and mental health and well-being, and really explore this concept with this group here to sort of uh, we always like to talk about collective learning. And so really trying to find ways that we uh, in this group for the next 20 minutes or so can really think through what is the effect that digital creators and influencers have on mental health and well-being? And what are things that we would uh, like to see in the future as we talk about the ways that uh, influencers shape the way we think about our mental health and our well-being? So I'm just going to jump right in. I'm super excited about this. Um, so the question starts with what do you know, what does creators, influencers play in adolescence well-being and really talking about how does it maintain or uh, improve individuals well-being? And so uh, if I could, my, my friend Simone, can you drop in the two definitions there? I think one of the questions that I want to make sure we get at the start is define what what we're talking about for well-being in this sort of session. And well-being is loosely uh, we're we're defining as being comfortable, healthy, or happy, right? And we know there's a there's a lot that uh, there's a lot that comes with that to unpack. Uh, but for this conversation, as we think about well-being, what are the things that help us become uh, happy, healthy, and comfortable in our own skin? And then when we talk about influencers, I know that that is a, a, loaded, a loaded definition as well. And so uh, someone who has the power to affect decisions of others. And, 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 and that's sort of a loose way that we're explaining uh, influencers. So I'm going to take a second there and just ask a, a brief question. As you think about well-being and influencers, is there anything that uh, resonates or that jumps out to you or emerges uh, when you think about the intersection of those two things. And you could come off the mic if you want, or you could drop it in the chat. Welcome everybody that's just joined. Um, we're talking about the uh, intersection of influencers, digital creators, and health, mental health and well-being uh, in adolescents. I think part of the problem is that influencer culture is a big hurdle to the happiness of others, mostly because influencer culture mostly promotes pushing products that hurt youth and hurt their mental images and um, like of what a person should look like, what a healthy person should look like, what healthiness is um, through the sales of things like skinny teas and stuff like that. So it just, getting rid of that entire culture would incredibly help youth. I love that. I, I, I love that you said that, Nathan, and thank you so much for sharing. And I think one of the things that, you know, when we talk about and what we're gonna have you do here is uh, give a little background. And I have about three questions that we'll do and, and we'll do it in a, a, a platform called Easy Retro, where each question will give you an opportunity to sort of just put down as many thoughts or ideas that uh, come to you as we think about these questions. And so as Nathan talked about, right, like there's this, there's this, there's this idea of trending, right? What, what trends and how we follow trends. And then what does it, what does it do as it relates to behaviors and what type of effect influencers and creators have on that? And so my first question to this group, and uh, I love it if Simone can drop the question uh, in the chat. Uh, but the first question is really around this idea what trends have you engaged in and why? And so as you think about um, influencers and their ability to be able to get us to, from TikTok to dancing to everything in between, uh, what type of trends have you uh, followed and experienced and why? 
And so here is uh, the link to the Fun Retro. Uh, and if you've never used Fun Retro, you'll click on the link. Inside the link uh, on the far left will be the first question. What trends have you engaged in and why? You can hit the plus button. And once you hit the plus button, it allows you to add as many comments as you want. Uh, I've made it so the, the cards are hidden so people won't see your uh, see who wrote it and when they wrote it. But just go ahead and drop as, drop as much as possible in there uh, for the next minute or so I'll give you. Um, and, and as you're doing that, for any individuals that have something in particular uh, that, uh, that want to speak out, so I see my friend Josh there decide to raise his hand. Josh, please go right ahead, sir. Uh, thank you so much, Jason. I was, I think about this a lot, actually, because I kind of, I tend to keep social media, at least on a personal level, at arm's length. So if there are any trends I get, it's only trickle down from my friends. And I think about this question a lot because I'm kind of thinking back to like, is the fundamental incentive structure driving influencers to, well, influence, does that, will that have a good effect on people? If the goal is ultimately to make a profit, then I don't see how ethics, you know, I don't see how people are being prioritized above their capacity to buy in an incentive structure viewpoint. That is just one lens. There are so many others and I have a limited perspective on this, but that was just what I wanted to share. I love I love that, Josh. Thank you so much for sharing my friend. And, and it sounds like what resonated uh, for me is this idea of intentionality, right? Like how are we intentionally promoting the success of influencers? And if it is to like deliver a product or service, is that above the cost of human well-being? And so I love that. So what I'll do is I'm a, I'm going to go ahead and uh, reveal the card, so you could go back in there and see what your fellow individuals wrote uh, there, and sort of uh, resonate from cooking to skinny jeans to dancing trends to flat tummy tees. These are all the trends that we've engaged engaged in the last probably year or so. Uh, when it comes to creators and influencers. And so now I'm excited. We're gonna go, we're gonna go another, we're gonna go another level deep. Uh, and the next question is really around this idea of when we think about this space, and I'll drop the uh, question unless uh, you could do that for me, Simone. Uh, but the question is how or in what ways have influencers impacted your well-being? And so this could be positive or negative. And so uh, I would love to hear any thoughts. Also, uh, the second row inside of the Easy Retro allows you to start dropping some thoughts in there. But I'd love to hear from anybody as you think about influencer, how have they impacted your well-being uh, for good or for negative? And I'd like to speak on that a little bit. Love it. Go ahead, Dorian. Yeah. So in terms of influencers, I think it's really just about um, representation for me personally. Um, for example, like you see um, stars like Rihanna creating a beauty brand that focuses on beauty in so many different colors from like shades one through 50, meaning that like there is not that same standard that you have um, of European standard for beauty, it's like all skin colors. So like, that's kind of amazing to me. I love that, that's such a great share. Uh, I, would, I would like to ask another question. I don't, I, don't, I don't mean to take up all the airspace here, but there was, there was something I was really curious about actually. And that's, are, is there any like, in, in terms of like really influential celebrities in society, is there, are there any other kind of equivalent groups similar to influencers who are facing some amount of regulation? Cause like, you know, we humans, we're, we learn by patterning. If you see anything enough, you're going to believe it. 
But we're, when we're in an age where you can kind of digitally manipulate the truth, photoshops, whatever, is there any framework that's already existing to regulate people who are knowingly telling untrue things and their impact on others? And I, I don't mean in a political landscape, although it does apply there, but almost so discreetly to individuals and their thoughts about themselves, for example. I think that's a really interesting question. Uh, you know, I do not have the answers. I mean, if anybody has ideas or suggestions for Josh, but you know, one of the things that I think about uh, that first came to mind is um, when we think about back in the day, cigarettes, the cigarette ads, right? This sort of like stamping down and, and having some sort of regulations where uh, mothers and on airplanes and on the side of football fields, right? Cigarettes were the cool thing to do. And at some point there needed to be some sort of regulation in that. Uh, and I love the way that you, you thought about that, right? I think it is highly valuable in the space that we're in now with digitization, digitalization, content, content creators, how things are being manipulated. So I think it's a really interesting uh, conversation. And I'll unhide the cards for the second row. So as you can start to see in what ways have influencer impacted uh, your mental health or well-being. Uh, and you can see representation. Uh, if you see successful people like you doing things, it makes you think you can too. Good watching people be honest about their mental health struggles and feeling less alone bad unrealistic beauty standards, Photoshop, plastic surgery, uh, help process tragedies, uh, social media and influencers within that, I often come away from it feeling pretty terrible about my body. And I'd like to take, I'd like to, you know, before we get into that third question, you know, I, I, I would love to just take some space here for individuals on the call, as you think about this, this trend, right? And we and we see the work that Headstream has been doing uh, with a lot of their innovators. Uh, we see this sort of conversation we're having now around this topic, right? What is your hopes, right, for influencers and that space as it relates to your own mental mental health and well being? How do you how do you prior, prior, prioritize what what matters most to you? When you're when you're looking at these um, social media, when you're when you're following individuals uh, online, what are some things that come to mind as um, that helps you either uh, relate or not relate to the topic or subject at hand? Or I can make it simpler. Like, what do you not like about? it right like what are the things that just really like get you sucked in and you feel like man i wish i wouldn't have went down that path um i would so i don't know if this is answering your question but what i would say is this one of the things that i hate the most is jumping on youtube and then there are people like especially selling to youth these get rich quick schemes uh, those ones are really, really popular, and I see that a lot. Uh, the other one for me, especially, like, I don't know if, like, college students would be, like, youth, I don't know, but, like, as college students, these pyramid schemes especially are very popular in colleges. Um, and so seeing, especially, in the, and they prey upon the, the influencers by finding people who would influence other people to get in, and, and, and it just basically goes on and on. Um, and so for me, those are things that I just make me cringe to sit there and see someone also my age, like targeting the youth to tell them like, you know, some of these things do this and this and this and buy my course and my course is going to teach you how to sell sneakers and, you know, make a bunch of money off of it. And then, you, you know, I mean, so for me, it's like those things, those types of influencers are the ones that I'm very, very wary of makes sense we see a lot of those anybody else resonate with what uh what he said good job carolyn yeah this i can take a little bit more on that actually so similar to what dm was saying in regard to influencers 
using their platform for bad. There's so many other influencers out there who are using it for um, social empowerment, like Lizzo with body positivity. Um, I think it's about being socially conscious and understanding like who, understand that you have a, a user base who are like seeing the content that you're making and then making socially aware content too. Um, yeah. If I could, um, oh, sorry, what are you saying? Go, go ahead, Josh. Go right ahead, my friend. Thank you. I, it, it, I wanted to echo what Norman said in a way on that idea of socially conscious content. Uh, this sounds like a really, this is a, a kind of a, a strange analogy, but like, you all know the movie Blues Brothers? Like any, anyone at all kind of ring a bell? Crazy movie from the 70s, very Midwestern friendly. I'm from the Midwest. I love it. But it set the record for the largest number of cars crashed in a film. And after that movie came out, the amount of vehicular damage that occurred that year went up a lot. People saw a fictional thing, a film, and it caused this massive increase in actual real life accidents because human beings, and as much as I hate to say it, particularly adolescents, have a very limited capacity to filter what they see in truth. So in that way, I think the biggest thing that social media content creators need to keep in mind is whatever they're seeing, at least one person is going to try to copy it. So you need to be presenting. You need to say out loud, all of the stuff I am doing, this is fictional. This is a fictitious version of a life. Because if you don't say that often, people will think it's real and they will make what could be tremendously poor decisions based off of that fictionalized account. I love that, Josh. Thank you so much. Anybody else agree with that or disagree or have thoughts to add to that? Uh, I might. Um, so I think it's, it's hilarious how my little sister I think she's influenced by whatever movie she's going to watch every weekend is coming from some Facebook rave about King Kong versus <laughs> versus Godzilla, something she knew nothing about, but she was talking about every day. And I'm like, dude, you don't you don't really know the history of this, but she was so pumped about this movie. And I found out is because of Facebook. And so every week. There's some new Facebook trend of a movie and she's going to watch it and she's going to really love it because everybody else loves it. So I think I think there's some of that for sure uh, that happens. And my little sister's part of that. <laughs> so I love it. So, I, you know, I know we had a short time together and and, and we shared some really good information. And, and so for my last question, it's it's sort of a, a question of hope. Right. As we think about what the next like year, two years or five years looks like as in this social media space, especially around influencers, especially around mental health and well-being after coming out of a pandemic. Right. I think a lot more people understand the impact of mental health and well-being that they have never understood before. And so as you think about personally for you. Right. And you had a magic wand that you can make anything happen or a genie in a lamp, right? You know, how can influencers use their platform to help you feel stronger and more empowered? What are ways that you believe that you would love to see and wake up every day and experience your digital platform in a way that helps you walk away feeling like a better version of yourself? And so in the fun retro, that last question on the right, go in, drop your thoughts, your ideas, anything that is possible, not possible. Uh, and let's see what, uh, what we get. I'll give you about a minute or two to drop some stuff in there and then we'll, um, we'll, we'll uh, check out at the end of that. And I wanna thank everybody for sharing why you're doing that. Josh, I can't believe you know the Blues Brothers. <laughs> I think that movie was out before you were born, probably. <laughs> My parents made me watch it, and I was like, what is this random movie from the 70s based in the Midwest? How could this possibly be good? And <laughs> it, was, it was something, all right. It, but it was, I love that analogy, because I think it, it's the most brute force example of how people learn. Um, 
also again huge fan of the midwest and they love promoting that i love it i love it so as we look at some of your some of the knowledge bombs you've all dropped and i'll just share a couple before we check out um as what a beautiful world would look like if influencers uh, had uh, you helping them out. Uh, getting, getting rid of the idea of needing to change your body to be happy. Influencers not beholden to sales and marketing. Be more real. Show that it's okay to not have everything together. Creating more and different types of people, lifestyles there's a greater chance that something out there is gonna connect, resonate and inspire you. I'd love to find folks whose values are expressed in a way that I resonate with. To be stretched, to grow as a person. Model vulnerability and growth. And last, promoting good habits in a non-judgmental healthy way. Social media is about connection and influence should just be real people. I don't take for granted the time that I get to spend with amazing humans. And so for the last like 25 minutes or so, it's been a pleasure spending my time with all of you. And as we think about this work in the uh, influencer space, digital creators and this uh, intersection of mental health and well-being, right? Our goal is that every day we create intentionality of how we can be better humans and better resources to the people that we connect with. And so I appreciate you all. Uh, and I look forward uh, to connecting with you all real soon. And you can hang on tight. I believe, uh, if I'm correct, the youth pitch is next. On